Hey, Joe Sixpack and I enjoy drinking almost everything. Well, almost everything. It's winter time. If you're gonna dress warmer, you gotta start drinking warmer. Makes sense to me. He's Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Mack. Now we're at the Town Tap by Conchock and Brewing Company in Havertown. A new episode of What's Brewing. is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County, travel the Bucks County Ale Trail. Check in digitally to five or more breweries to score a free t-shirt. Get your passport at visitbuckscounty.com. And by the Concha Hawk and Brewing Company. Visit conchahawkandbrewing.com for the latest releases, location hours, menus, and online stores. You don't have to go away to get away. Go and explore. Find the small businesses that make where you live a community. When you dine, choose homemade. On a free weekend, discover the great outdoors. And if it's brewed here, enjoy it with friends. Support small for an experience you won't find anywhere else. Make it local, make it Main Street, make it Motco. Hi, welcome to What's Brewing along with Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Magna. We are at Town Tap in Havertown, one of five places run by Conchock and Brewing Company. It's a chilly January day, Joe Sixpack, so I am drinking my two hour delay winter warmer. How about you? Uh, that's a wheat beer, and this mm -hmm. is new. It's the Dunkelweizen, the new one called Zen from Conchi. Uh, really yeah. tasty. Yep, a new release. All right, so as we said, winter, cold, maybe you drink a little differently. That's the theme of our beer swap today. It is. Uh, normally, we're talking about stouts, but we brought uh, a couple uh, different beers. Why don't you show yours there first, Glenn? It's uh, the... There it is. There it is. The Bigfoot Ale from uh, Sierra Nevada, one of my all-time favorites. I'm, I'm glad we're going to show this one off. I am as well. So here's the story with this one. They've been making this thing forever, since 1983 is when they introduced it. And it's one of those ones, like, you know, we talked about with Mad Elf, where people wait for the release every year. That's, listen, that's a beautiful beer. Isn't I would say that about it, yeah. Yeah, it's a, uh, what is it? It's almost 10% alcohol. I think this is probably one of the really- I think this is a 9.3 this year is what I saw on this baby. I think so. Um, barley wine style, explain what that means. Okay, so it's not wine, obviously, it's beer, but it's beer at wine strength, or darn near wine strength. Oh yeah. and. Uh, it, it, it's a style, it's, it's an old British style, and it's basically, you know, you, I'm surprised they don't call it these days like a triple or a quadruple IPA, because really what it is, it's, a, it's an amber beer, a little bit more malt content, but a lot more hops. This is extremely bitter beer. It is, I like it. To me, sit by the fireplace, feet up on the, uh, you know, Barco lounger, maybe doing a crossword puzzle, scratching the cat by my <laughs> side. That's how I That's would enjoy this beer. A totally great way to, uh, to spend a winter afternoon. The nice thing about this beer is that because it is so strong, this is one of the classic beers Ew. to age. You put these in your cell, you could drink this four or five years later because it'll definitely hold up. The thing that I find on it is that the hops tend to reduce a little bit over time and comes up with more of like a port flavor out of it. It's an outstanding beer to age, but I'm not waiting because this is... Yeah, it's here now out. and so are we. What do you bring? I'm going the other way with uh, the wintertime beers. This is sort of a, a phenomenon that started about 10 years ago. Oh yeah, oh sure. With uh, specialty uh, hoppy beers. Uh, the, the most famous one of them is from Russian River. Pliny the Elder, or Pliny, depending on how you say it. Uh, Bell's Hop Slam is another one, but this one can stand right with them. It is Trogue's Nugget Nectar from our friends out in uh, Hershey. This is, you know, you might call this an IPA. They call this 
a amber, an imperial amber ale, mm -hmm. and uh, it's seven and a half percent alcohol. It's got a lot more bracing. Uh, this beer actually you smell a little pine. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So smooth, but so oh, I really, you know, yeah, really yeah. the hops are coming out big on this one. It's it, it's it is a seasonal release. As I said, it it's one of a few that people go nuts about during you know in January, February. Okay. There are some people who regard beer as like, nah, it's a warm mother drink. I don't drink beer in the winter. You're just saying adapt and keep going. Yeah, generally you want to, you know, maybe a beer that's a little bit stronger. As you, you know, you pick, painted that beautiful picture of sitting by the fireplace. Yeah. Maybe you just came in from shoveling snow. You want to warm up a little bit. A more a higher alcohol beer uh, will do it. The traditional style has been stout. You know, winter is stout season, mm -hmm. and uh, these days there's so many different kinds of stouts out there. I know you guys make one here at Conchi, the Oats with Goat Oatmeal Stout. Yep. Very smooth beer made with oatmeal, which tends to smooth out the body, very nice and warming. Uh, this is a new one from Sly Fox, also an oatmeal stout, uh, soft yeah, softly falling darkness. Okay, uh, nice name. Uh, so those are oatmeal stouts, and then here we got this new one here. This is it of the new breed of flavored sort of dessert stouts. If you give a moose a muffin stout, oh, I I read that book to my kids when they were little. <laughs> this is from. I don't Mag remember that particular line, but yeah, uh, magnified. Brewing. It's a banana nut muffin stout uh, oh. from uh, from Jersey. Now we may have to open that before we're done. All right, let's get out on this. Are there any beers that you wouldn't drink in the winter? Well, for me, no, because for professional purposes, I'm always drinking <laughs> beers, but you're required to. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, maybe Hefeweizen would be more of a uh, summer beer. It's a. Re uh, it's definitely a beer that is meant to you know help cool down. Uh, it, you know, on those hot summer days, so I probably would avoid a half. So right, there summer. you go. We like beer. winter weather. Listen, we like alcohol. We don't hide it. But everybody's had the one thing to drink that just maybe was the worst thing ever. For me, it's this. I'm going to make him try it when we get back. It's what's Thanks. brewing from Town Tap in Habertown. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack. When you can actually see the craftsmanship that went into making something, you're transported back to a simpler time. There's nothing quite like the feeling of freedom that you get riding in the open cockpit of a biplane. Like the many Pennsylvania plein air artists who came before me, I found inspiration for my art in the hills and the valleys of Bucks County. Bucks County is my home. Bucks County is my home. And Bucks County is my home. Visit Bucks County, where home feels like a getaway. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mackin with the Town Tap in Havertown. All right, brace yourself. <laughs> Friend of mine is moving out of state, and so he's got a good liquor collection, and so he's taking most with him, but open bottles you can't move, so he was nice enough to let me inherit some of his scotch, some of his vodka. It was very nice, and in it was this. It's called Brennevin. It's an Icelandic liquor made with caraway seeds. I thought, well, I've never had that. Let's try that. <laughs> Here's the deal. And we're going to talk about stuff you've had to drink that you don't like. I like most things, right? I'm not a big clear liquor guy, but I will drink it. I like beer, obviously. I enjoy a wine. I can drink scotch, brown liquors, whatever. This, when I tasted this, here's to you is the worst thing I have ever tasted in my life. And I tell you that before you even try it. Okay, so here's what Brennavin is. It is an Irish grain liquor flavored with caraway seeds and cumin. Oh, <laughs> yes. It's the signature drink of Iceland, often paired with putrefied shark. Ah, you've been to Iceland. I have, and I've actually had this before. You see, I'm so delaying I'm drinking gonna, it. I'm gonna let you go first, uh, Glenn. This is known as Black Death. Yes. And rightly so. Yeah, well, you see, the bottle yes. is black and white, also known as Burning Wine, which sounds really good. <laughs> um, and it's like, it's the cheapest thing they buy in Iceland, so they all drink it. Okay, here's to you. Oh, God, that's horrible. <laughs> All right, Glenn. Uh, oh, I came oh. prepared. I'm gonna go <laughs> oh, that'll make all the difference. Yeah, I'm sure. There you go. Well, here's to you. 
it actually no, it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> right? I mean, to me, again, it's it's like it's like rye bread, but and I like rye bread, but it's not with a ham and Swiss. It's, 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 it's rye like, bread that's been soaking in a puddle somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> in a sewer. Okay, so that got us into the question of what's the worst thing you ever drank? Okay, and we asked our viewers to tell us, and we're gonna we're gonna take turns on these. I'm going to start with some of the beer ones. A guy named Guy Blur said, Sam Adams Scotch Ale. I love Sam, but this one tastes like somebody dumped an ashtray into a beer and bottled it. Right. Uh, Politic Kills uh, wrote that he, Dogfish had created a beer using experimental hops called Alpha Beast. That's something that Dogfish Head would do. The idea was to make the hoppiest beer ever made. Uh, IPAs normally are as they measured in IBUs, uh, yeah. international bitterness units, of around 60 to 80 is average. This one was 658. Oh, was, you try was, this thing? I never had it. He said it was called Who Lord, which is a great name. So Who Lord. Okay. Uh, Dollar Store Publius said that Kirkland, listen, I shop at Costco. Their stuff is pretty good. I like their stuff. But they made a beer, probably not sold in Pennsylvania. Uh, he said it tasted like weak, open, skunky, natty light, watered down with the contents of the most heavily used urinal and grapes. <laughs> Grand Central Station. Our viewers oh. are great. I love our viewers. Lovely. So what's the worst thing you ever had? All right. Well, I normally find something good about every single beer I've ever had because... You very know, admirable. It is. That's, I try. But uh, I will say I had a beer once at a tasting uh, that I did called NGD 64 Lemonade. Oh, sure. Uh, 64 ca uh, ca uh, calories. Uh, yeah. It was just it was it was just god awful. A friend described it as having the flavor of Ricola cough drops with the aroma of a urinal cake. <laughs> Apparently, urinals a big part of all this conversation. <laughs> really. All right, so let's get into some of the some of the grain liquors that people didn't like. Devin Demore says Sammy Hager made a rum called Beach Bar Rum. Didn't know that. Tasted like. Licking the flesh of rotting papaya in the hot tropical sun. We thought we'd relegate it to rum and coke duty, but even then, the rancid, palpable stench cut through the cola like last spring's garbage. <laughs> Patrick McLaughlin uh, talked about uh, something called Arak, made in Sri Lanka, made from the fermented sap of coconut flowers or sugar cane uh, to replicate the experience. Might be good. Uh, suck on a wild, a wide gauge black sharpie. Inhale the flame fumes, the fumes from a bucket of fruit tree fungicide. Then press your tongue to a whistling tea kettle filled with taxidermy mice. Again, our viewers are terrific. All right, a lot of people mentioned the one same thing, which is known as Jepsum's Malort, a Chicago-based liquor made out of wormwood. I've never heard of it. Nor I. Just. Yeah. So Matthew Landis said, it tastes like the day Dad left for cigarettes and never came back. Also, pencil, <laughs> eraser, shavings, and kerosene, which I love. Jason Tadekas, Ted Lasso, uh, right. wrote about this. He said, it's like swallowing a burnt condom filled with gas, gasoline. <laughs> oh, man. So this is what they say on the bottle of Malort, Joe Sixpack. Our liquor is rugged and unrelenting, even brutal to the palate. During almost 60 years of American distribution, we found only one out of 49 men will drink Jepsum's Malort. <laughs> the taste just lingers and lasts seemingly forever. The first shot is hard to swallow. Persevere, make it past two shot gla shock glasses, and the third will live with you forever. What do you think? Uh, quite the uh, advertising come on. Really makes me want to crack open a bottle of Malort. Yeah, don't get that. Don't get this. Stick with this stuff. This stuff is all good for you. Trust us. All right, coming back, we're going to tell you about the latest chapter of our scavenger hunt. Joe Sixpack, Glenn Macnow, from the Town Tap and Concha Hocken by Concha Hocken, Town Tap and Abertap by Concha Hocken Brewing Company. It's what's brewing. Glenn Mack now here with Andrew Colligan from Conshohocken Brewing Company. Let's run down the new lineup of exciting beers, starting with Type A. Our number one selling beer, big citrus hop notes, a nice dry finish, the quintessential American IPA. Ring the bell Pilsner. And that's our fastest growing brand. It's a smooth, easy drinking Pilsner to enjoy during a game. Life Coach. Hazy, 100% citrus hop session IPA. The perfect beer for all day at the golf course or the pool. Puddlers Rope ESP. Ah, that's our multi roasty English pub ale, two silver medals at the World Beer Cup. Maybe the best English show in the country. MC5, my favorite. Double dry hopped IPA, it's all the juicy goodness you want in a hazy IPA. Philly Vice. It's a rotating series of fruited sours, light and easy drinking. 
Mr. Robusto. Ah. Dark chocolatey porter, perfect dark beer for a cold winter's night. All exciting beers, enjoy them all and a whole lot more at Concha Hocken Brewing Company's five PA locations and wherever fine beer is sold. Cheers. Welcome back to What's Brewing, Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mack, now we're at the Town Tap in Havertown by Contract and Brewing Company. My neighborhood joint right off of Darby Road, uh, and I'm enjoying a Life Coach Sessionable IPA. Good beer for uh, a late morning, are we still here? Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah, we're, we're uh, I'm still working on my Dougal Bison. All right, so this, as you can see, is a hazy IPA, and that brings us to our challenge this week in our scavenger hunt, let me just back up and say we, we've had a great time with people doing it over the last 10, 11 weeks. They've been submitting all kinds of fun things, one of which was the haziest IPA. You're seeing some of those now. Joe Sixpack, what's this week's challenge? Okay, this week we want to see a beer book or magazine, a mm -hmm. book about beer. I've written several books about it. I've written a lot of magazines. Plugging thyself. <laughs> exactly. So you could show one of my books. Or, you know, we're going to widen it a little bit. If you show yeah, one. As long of... as we're plugging ourselves. Yes. So I wrote this book with the late, great Big Daddy Graham, my pal. Uh, the Great Book of Philadelphia Sports List. There are a few lists that are not sports lists, including this one by Joe Sixpack <laughs> of the 10 Most Important Beers in Philadelphia History. Or a beer magazine. Get a photo of one of those. Send it to us. I'm at Real Glenn Mac now on Twitter. You are at uh, beer underscore radar, uh, or you can send it to What's Brewing PA. And somebody in the end is going to win a night to drink with us. And maybe when they do, we'll try something exotic. We often talk in this uh, show about countries that make good beer, and you think of Germany, right? You think of England. England, yeah, I love exactly. those British malt ales. So, so the thing is, though, craft brewing and unusual beer styles uh, have spread around the world to even to countries where you don't really think of them as being uh, beer with, that, that has in, unusual. You mm -hmm. think of them be, maybe like just plain old lager beers like uh, Italy or Japan and so on. And so I thought I'd bring a few that I found recently. Sweet. Uh, and I figure, you know, since we just bashed the hell out of Brennevin uh, Iceland. From Iceland. Yeah. Uh, We're killing that country's tourism right now. <laughs> Why don't we try a beer, Don't a craft beer from Iceland. Oh, wow. Uh, they do that there, huh? It, in fact, they do. This is Einstock. It is a wee heavy yeah. uh, Scottish ale. Uh, and we'll see how this goes. I'm Wait, a wee heavy it. Scottish ale from Iceland. Exactly. That's, okay, That's sure. one of the great things about beer is Why it not? crosses borders. There you go. Ooh, that's a dark baby. That's so, pretty full. But man, I, you cannot see my finger through that glass. Here we go. I don't like the smell of it. it. Smells like hay. It's strong. It's malty, but it's malty, and I like malty. You yeah. know what? It's uh, it's uh, B minus. It's okay. Yeah, I'm let a me, little bit lower. Let me do this way. If I go to Iceland and I'm forced to drink, which I may be, I'm taking this before this. Yeah, this, this is to me somewhat of an average wee heavy. They're, Americans are making better ones, and certainly you can find a better one in Scotland. But uh, this this brewery here, uh, Balladin, has been making some amazing beers. This is a spiced uh, ale, a saison style. Love the bottle, by the way. Uh, yeah, they're really cool. They and it's probably it's a premium price. They they are pretty fancy, uh, outstanding beers. Uh, if you can find an Italian craft beer, get it because they are they're really something special. They're made. They're, they're brewing beers that are good with food. So these are small local brewers? Yes, absolutely. And, but but they're important. Still, I found these all in, in the Philadelphia region. Okay. Uh, this was an interesting one, a new one for me, from Poland. You don't think of Poland as being a, a big... Uh, I don't know that I've ever had a beer from Poland. Unusual. If you have, it's going to be something with a name that you can't pronounce. Right. And, uh, and, and it's probably just a strong blonde or pale lager. Uh -huh. This is, uh, I think it's called Combs, Raspberry Porter. Unusual style, wow, interesting. dear period, but okay. they come from Poland. Uh, this one, this is one I thought was the, the most amazing one to me. This is from Mexico, land of Corona. I've had Mexican lagers many times. Exactly. Some good ones. The, the dark lagers from Mexico, good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but here they have an IPA, Ray uh, IPA. Wow. Yeah, who would have guessed an IPA from south of the border? Interesting. So, uh, one last one here that I wanted to mention is from Hitachino Nest in Japan. We don't think much about Kirin. Japanese. Yeah, Kirin. Yeah, I think exactly. Right. This is a red rice ale so they're making a beer with rice not unlike 
say Budweiser, but yeah. it's a specialty beer. Uh, it's very tasty. I've had this beer numerous times. Excellent try, uh, beer to find. Okay, and I can go to my local beer store and I will find some of these and expand my horizons. And absolutely. In the age of the pandemic when we can't travel too much, go to your okay. beer store. And, <laughs> there you and, go. And, and, hey, everybody, I'm visiting Poland. <laughs> there you go. All right, well, that seems like fun. Good work yeah. by you. Hey, coming up, there's another way to do it, which is you can make your own beer. We're going to talk to a local guy who's got a store that will help you get started. From the uh, Town Tap in Havertown, Joe Sixpack, Glenn Mac. now, this is What's Brewing. Hey, welcome back to What's Brewing. We're at the Town Tap, run by Conchock and Brewing Company, right here in beautiful Havertown on West Benedict Avenue. Here's the thing. You walk around the corner to Darby Road, you go like two doors, and there it is. Brew your own beer. And the owner of that fine establishment, Eric Hartline, is with us. First of all, before we talk about anything, what'd you bring us? Yeah, he brought us some uh, nice cans already labeled. That's, uh, what do we got here? We have a coffee mild. Mm -hmm. uh, the coffee was supplied by House Cup Coffee Roasters up the street here in Havertown. And it's a 4% uh, English mild. I put some coffee beans in it. Nice. And uh, there it is. It's right very now. smooth. Uh, you know, the thing that I'm always amazed at is how good homebrew can be. Sure. I mean, really good homebrewers can make beer that's every bit and often better than what you see on shelves. That, that is true. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little bit about what it takes to be a homebrewer. So we've got a box sitting here. We in have front a box, of us. yes. So if you're starting out in the, in the hobby, you need a couple things. You need some equipment and you need. Uh, ingredient kits and uh, a kettle and then obviously water and time um, the, the ingredient kit we have in front of us is a Pacific Coast IPA which is a West Coast style IPA show us what you got in there. sure so inside the box is everything you need to make a five gallon batch of beer we have uh, bottle caps and priming sugar which is down the road after your beer is done fermenting we have little packets of grains malt Grains. We have some more grains. We have a bag of corn sugar to help dry this beer out. We have two cans of liquid malt extract. This is Pilsen malt, uh, which is called from Pilsen grain. And we've got a bunch of hops. Uh, Columbus, Centennial, Amarillo, all one yeah, so ounce. Yeah, so that's, that's his favorite. Yeah, that's no, I, but yeah. you know what? I love this. Is, it's like a, like a great present to open up and you keep finding all this fun stuff. All right, I'm going to be honest. Sure. I got a C in high school chemistry, and that was the end of any science. That was the last science sure. course I ever took. I was not good at that. Yep. Can the average guy who's not a mad scientist succeed in this, or gal sure. succeed in this? Yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 it's become so easy to brew uh, nowadays, especially compared to you know, 15, 20 years ago. The products are much better. A whole different varieties of stuff in, in terms of ingredients and malts. Um, yeah, it's it's really easy, kind of kind of infallible. Now, Havertown's this has been around your shop. Havertown's uh, brew your own beer has been around for twenty seven years. That's correct. Long yeah. time, uh, and you got into it how many years ago? I started brewing out of that shop in ninety six. Wow. Uh, the previous owner John Reynolds had run a night course through the township, and we brewed at a church over in uh, Penwin. Um, the pastor there was a customer here. At the shop, and uh, you know, John ran the night course. I took the course, started brewing, and I've never stopped. Um, okay, since. so it is something that so many people are getting into these yep. days, right? And sure. I guess because, as you say, it's kind of fun and easy. How does somebody go? You know, we got the basic starter kit. How do people kind of learn to develop their own personality with it? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a, it's it's like now you have to understand what the base malts do. You have to understand what different hops are all about. Um, there's all kinds of information out there online and books you can get. Just you have to get a, a basic understanding of you know, what the base malts are, and off of that, then you have to look at the specialty grains. These are the specialty grains that are inside of that IPA mm -hmm. kit. So obviously, this is a dark beer. This has different specialty grains that that IPA would have in it. So you have to understand how things work, and then just start kind of putting stuff together. Like building a beer. Uh, have you noticed any kind of changes during the pandemic at all with home brewing, or more people doing it, or, or what? Yeah, we, we saw uh, it was it was strange, but we saw an uptick in, in guys that were older than us 
getting back into the hobby that hadn't brewed in 10, 12, 15 years. Interesting. And suddenly they had all this time and they're calling me up and saying, hey, I'm, I want to get back into it. Let's get me set up. It actually happened to me and you tasted some of my home brew last season. Uh, I've, yeah, I will say I've had, uh, I'm batting about 333. I'm sticking <laughs> yeah. to major leagues. Exactly. <laughs> Not good for a quarterback that's, completion but, but that's percentage. a whole thing. Yeah. Well, but that, that, that does raise the question though. I mean, given mm. the fact that there are so many great beers out there, sure. why, why would you make it yourself? Well, it, it's, it's like anything else. I mean, you can, you can, you know, go get pizza anywhere too, but people love to make pizza. It's, mm -hmm. it's all about getting into the hobby and, 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 and doing things yourself and that, that mindset. All right, and for Eric, this began as a hobby. Eric is a long established sports photographer. You will, may see him on the sidelines at games. And he took a photograph <laughs> about 30 years ago for the Delco Time, or the, excuse me, the Daily Times New, New of Delaware, Delaware County. This for News of Delaware County. News of Delaware County, that's what I said. And we're, <laughs> gonna show, we're gonna show it. It is a picture of my son at age three that actually your picture, and I didn't, we didn't realize this today, hangs in my house today. That's awesome. So I really appreciate uh, it. I love that. All right, yes. so people want to find <laughs> your place and get started. Tell them how they do it. Uh, you, you come in the shop. You simply drive to Havertown. I don't do anything online. It's all come in, talk to me. Uh, we'll get you set up, get you squared away. We do wine, we do cider, we do beer. It's, it's, it's simple. 1226 Darby Road. 2026. 2026 Darby Road. There you go. You know what? Start at the town tap, work your way around the corner. Right. Easy to go. find. And yes. you'll find it. Eric Harline, thank you so much sure. for joining us. Thanks for having me. Guys. Good luck to yeah, you. Appreciate it. Uh, and thanks to the town tap in Havertown for hosting us for Joe Sixpack. I'm Glenn Macknow. We'll see you next week on What's Brewing. What's Brewing is brought to you in part by Monco Makers, powered by the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. Download the app. By Visit Bucks County, travel the Bucks County Ale Trail. Check in digitally to five or more breweries to score a free t-shirt. Get your passport at visitbuckscounty.com. And by the Concha Hawk and Brewing Company. Visit conchahawkandbrewing.com for the latest releases, location hours, menus, and online stores.